In this video, I wanted to give you a brief summary of the 13 market crash signs that we have been talking about over the last 90 days on our channel, Market Crash 2018. Now, some of you have been laughing at some of those signs. Some of you have been taking those signs seriously, and therefore you have been making money because our channel is not called Market Crash because we're just absolute bears, but because if the market is bearish, you should be placing bearish bets if you're trying to profit from such market environment. This is not a video where I'm going to go in depth over the chart analysis. I'm just going to point out the 13 apparent market crash signs, which I have personally observed and which helped me tremendously in trading put options on certain type of stocks. Now, for those of you that have been brainwashed with buying the dip, I do have some news for you. I have been stating it for the last couple of months. This is one dip that you should not buy. As a matter of fact, I have been talking on this channel for a while now, how instead of buying the dips, you should be doing exactly the opposite. You should be shorting the tops. Okay, so let's get to it. What are the 13 signs that you should be paying attention to? Because luckily, it's not too late. So the first sign was when the market dropped 666 points on February 2nd. Sign number two, when that week in particular, the market actually at one point doubled that number to the exact 666 times two. And I did post a video on this channel talking about it. And it literally about 1300 point drop before the market finally rebounded on February 9th. That was sign number two for 666. Second sign was twice the 666. And if you've been observing the markets carefully, where did the S&P have been trading for the last 10 days? Well, every time I've been looking at my screen, there's just a weird number that's been popping. 2666. Six, six. And that range was finally broken today on the way lower. If you look back last Friday, the markets have been trading right at that range. 26. 66, which would be coincidentally the 666 on February 9th, two times 666. And we have observing the same numbers again, but now in the S&P 500. Now call me crazy, call me whatever you want to call me. I don't care. I just want you to make money. Okay. And if you don't know how to trade options, it's very basic. It's very simple. Visit my site, marketcrash.money. Hit the big green button, how to profit. Schedule your one-on-one -on -one coaching session. I'll show you exactly what you've got to do to profit over the next two weeks. Now, number three sign that everybody just sort of kind of accepted. Well, we are officially at the point in the United States history where the margin debt is at its all-time high ever in the entire history of the United States. If you look at the history of all the market crashes, okay, the highest margin debt was in 1929, it was in 1987, it was in 2007, 2008 crash. So we can track this characteristic of a market crash to almost every downturn, recession, and so on um, throughout the United States history. Now, a lot of rate, rate hike talk has been just a talk over the last few years, but now we're actually seeing that it's real, okay? That they're really raising the interest rates for the first time ever. And not only they're doing that, but they're doing it at the same time as they are unwinding the entire stimulus, which has held up the economy over the last nine years. Number five, very little probably talked about factor, but United States, is definitely ready to go to war whether you've been paying attention to that or not you know recently Trump has increased the military spending you don't increase the military spending on top of the already all-time high military spending if you're not preparing to go to war so read between the lines United States is about to go to war now typically the war sometimes is regarded is a way to avoid a recession so they have tried everything they have tried the stimulus they have tried the low interest rates the last resort well hell with it we're just gonna have to go to war
Well, it may be too late to do so. Oil prices heading back to 90. Looks like it. We could be reaching oil price at 90, maybe 100 bucks in the next six months to a year. But the trend is pretty clear at this point. GDP growth is slowing. Now, it's not the problem that the GDP growth is slowing because GTB has been rising consecutively so, for so many quarters. But the fact that the GDP growth is slowing at the same time as the consumer credit card debt, such as you know, credit cards, student loans, any type of consumer debt is actually at the all-time high. Student loans. 1.5 trillion credit card debt 1.4 trillion never ever in the history of the United States has that been the case so as the economy is slowing as the production is slowing as the demand is slowing because the prices are rising the interest rates are rising the cost of doing business is rising the cost of gasoline is rising because the oil prices are rising everything is rising it's becoming difficult for companies to be operating and to sustain at the sustainable levels and what that's going to lead to, it's going to lead to massive layoffs. And when people are going to get laid off, please tell me how they're going to pay their credit card when they can barely pay it already. Please tell me how they're going to pay their student loans when they haven't been paying them already. So it's not the GDP growth slowdown that matters on its own, but in combination with a country that's maxed out is when it could really create a serious issue. Now, clearly commodity prices on the rise. For the first time, we're seeing commodities like silver moving up 40, 50 cents in one day. That's like unheard of. That has not happened in years. So there's clearly signs that we're heading into a recession. Now, sign number nine, the markets are saying their final goodbye to the earnings season. Now, there's been a lot of talk how earnings are great and how, you know, please understand one thing, okay? When these big institutional investors, they go invest money, they don't care in particular how things are going right now, right this second. They make their investment decisions of how things are going to be six months, a year, two, three, four, five years uh, uh, later down the line. So. The fact that they're not buying stocks as they are announcing what appears to be a pretty good earnings season, that signifies that they don't believe this environment of great earnings is going to be sustainable in the future. Number 10, of course, all over the news you're going to hear today, the bond yields, 3% bond yields. Well, it's not the 3% bond yields that matter because historically, actually, that's not very high. But what does matter is the fact that we could be seeing a trend reversal here from the historic lows where finally the trend is reversing to where these bond yields could not just pause at three, they could literally go up significantly beyond three. And if they reach levels of four, five, six, it could be a very serious issue. Of course, we're not going to cover the ongoing talks about tariff wars and so on, which, of course, if the tariff war does get worse. All it does, it increases the prices which are already rising in the United States. So who cares about the tax cuts? Well, you're going to say, well, tax cuts are good. Of course they're good. Fine. Temporarily, they're great. Okay, so people are going to go ahead and try to spend them. Well, apparently, they're not spending the money. That's number one because we're not seeing an increase in spending. Um, so even with the tax cuts, people are not utilizing that extra income to spend for some reason, which means they're probably worried, which we're sort of getting the divergence here because the consumer confidence is sort of an all time high, but they're not spending the money. Uh, hey, <laughs> it's a divergence. OK, it's a divergence which tells me the markets are about to break lower okay the problem with that is okay if they're not spending money if the consumer is not spending money at this level if the prices go up what are they all of a sudden going to start spending then of course not just imagine yourself going to a gas pump okay and instead of putting gas at you know two two fifty now you're putting gas at four dollars and you still got the same drive to work okay that's gonna 
it, that's going to definitely affect your spending abilities on your day-to-day -day basis and that's something you're going to be thinking about a lot more and that's going to outweigh any tax cuts that potentially have been placed uh, in your pocket. So now enough of that. Number 12. Clearly we've been observing this pattern. The FANG stocks are selling off. Now we've seen FANG stocks sell off here and there, okay, but very little bit. Now this sell-off is actually sustainable and we're seeing these FANG stocks go up on low volume, they're selling off on high volume and now they've been doing that over a very uh, a, a, a much larger amount of time compared to them just simply dropping for a fraction of time and almost instantly rising and going higher. That is not the case anymore. That is why I'm saying this is not the time to buy the dip. This is the dip that you don't want to buy. This is the dip that's going to turn into a falling knife and you still have a chance to make some crazy returns if you know which put options to buy if you know how to short this market and if you don't again visit marketcrash.money hit the big green button how to profit schedule your one-on-one -on -one training session I'll show you exactly what to do okay so the problem with no one buying thing is this thing stocks really <laughs> what's been driving these markets higher and higher so if they're not driving markets higher and higher, how do you think that's going to impact the indexes, the S&P, the NASDAQ in particular? Well, we're not going to see any highs anytime soon on any one of those indexes. Surprise, surprise. Now, let me ask you another question. If they're not buying Google when it is announcing a solid quarter, when it bids the earnings, when it bids the sales numbers, when the report is really strong, okay and the stock drops what does that tell you if they're not buying such strong company with strong fundamentals and strong positive you know future outlook right do you really think they're going to be buying these mediocre companies that can't even turn a profit that's got you know problem with increasing sales numbers you know uh consistently of course not so if they're not buying the best of the breed, trust me, they're not going to be buying some dogs out there. All right. And I do love dogs, by the way. Just I don't like dogs being stocks who don't move in any kind of direction. OK. And number 13. OK. Let's talk about buybacks. Now, of course, the market has been artificially sustained with the low interest rate environments, this and that. But often downplayed over the last few years a lot of stocks simply have risen like Chipotle from you know 100 bucks to 850 dollars a share because they've been continuously buying us their own stocks back how about AZO I mean from 200 all the way to 800 currently trading at 590 okay buybacks 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 okay do you think these companies because the interest rates are rising do you think they're going to buy more of their stocks back because the costs are going to go are going to be much higher to try to uh, to buy their own stocks back? Or do you think they're going to, on the opposite, just rush in and buy more? So maybe for a little while longer, we will still see some companies buying the stocks. But if the interest rates keep rising, forget about it. So, okay, if the stock reports mediocre earnings, typically the company would step back in, buy some more stocks. Now, if they're not doing that now, what's going to happen to the stock price? They're going to drop. Okay, so... Goodbye, buybacks. Maybe for a little bit longer, but maybe not. So here's where we are. Higher cost environment combined with slower growth and slower demand will lead to higher unemployment rates. That in turn will do the following. Loan default rates will skyrocket on both corporate and individual levels causing the next recession. The delay effect of artificially designed economic environment is finally wearing off and we're about to see a drop in the stock market, a massive short-term stock market drop. The government is maxed out. The corporations are maxed out. The individuals are maxed out. And guess what? So as the stock market it's 100% maxed out and it's got nowhere to go 
but lower. So you can believe this, you don't have to believe this, but if you do choose to believe this and you're ready to make some money, this is what you gotta do. Visit marketcrash.money, hit this jumpy green button. See it's jumping up and down, up and down. How to profit. So that's what the market's been doing, jumping up and down, up and down. But this time, there is gonna be no jump higher. So take action now. If you're curious, which stocks to short? If you're a brand new trader, looking on how to get started with trading options because trading options will generate you much higher returns opposed to simply shorting stocks. And it does not require a huge amount of capital opposed to trading some of these high dollar stocks like thousand, two thousand dollar stocks, which of course allows you to participate in the big institutional game of trading. And that's where your biggest returns are going to be. So if you want to know how to do that, Simply click right here, how to profit, schedule your one-on-one -on -one consultation. Okay, we are running out of time. In my view, the market could drop as much as 10, 20% in the next 10 days. So take action now. If you're an experienced trader looking for new trading ideas, if you'd like to know specifically which stocks to short, where to short them, how to short them, at which price points, and so on, and which strike price, and all that good stuff, click the button, take action, make 2018 your most profitable year ever.